The Voice of the City. 98 FM's Dublin Talks. With Adrian Kennedy. We're live every morning from 10 on 98 FM. There is a mental health issue that many people are suffering with in silence. Now, unlike other forms of mental health, this condition uh, isn't being taken seriously by society. And I want to talk to you about OCD, Obsessive Compulsive Disorder. Now, it's in the public domain and being debated lately because of a storyline in Coronation Street, in which uh, the character Craig is living with OCD, which sees him checking that uh, light switches are off 20 times, checking that the... um, the oven is off over and over again, making sure that all the cutlery in the kitchen is arranged correctly. And a recent article suggested that OCD is seen as a bit of a joke by many people. Now, here's what one piece uh, says. The term obsessive compulsive has to be a jokey shorthand to the detriment of people who actually suffer. People confuse OCD with someone who likes a clean house. This is wrong. One in 100 people are thought to suffer with OCD. 51% with OCD are severe sufferers. Now, the reason our producer Jeremy is here is because you uh, have OCD. Yeah, I've spoken about it. Um, I spoke about, well, I speak about it openly. Uh, and I want you to speak about it openly as well, because I wanted to, I want to break this stigma of this. Particular, it is a mental health issue, by the way. And if you do... Uh, suffer with OCD like I do. No, I mean, and this is what I want to I want to get out, uh, make it very clear. Proper OCD, okay? Proper OCD. There are two types of, of OCD. Um, you know, people who have their house clean, yeah, all the time, are always cleaning. As people say to them, oh, Mary always cleans her house, she has OCD. That is no, not OCD. I'm going to give you uh, examples, and I'm going to open up here a bit on the radio and be, get a bit personal about it, because I want other people who have actual OCD to uh, to come forward and tell me your stories but also what I want to do is I want to I want to do two things I want to break the stigma of OCD mm-hmm. people should not be ashamed to have obsessive compulsive disorder you shouldn't be ashamed of it there's nothing to be ashamed of I, I have it I'm not ashamed uh, of it but also I want to try and educate you the public to stop making jokes about OCD. You don't make jokes about any other mental illness. Okay, so tell me, tell me how. And I want to hear, by the way, six seven nine seven ninety eight one is our phone number. If you're somebody who lives with OCD, uh, tell me how it affects your life. How does it affect your life? It's a it's a, it's a daily thing. I mean, just just one example. Every morning, and my my wife uh, who who lives with me and. She, I don't think she even understands, and she gets quite frustrated with me uh, at times. Um. When we're leaving to go to work uh, every day and uh, I lock the front door, mm-hmm. I have to pull the handle down between t- 10 and 12 times to make sure that the, the handle was locked. Only this morning, I uh, locked the door and we were running late uh, for work and I locked the door on the outside. It has a handle, one of those handles that you pull down. And I did it five times, I think it was. I walked away to get into my car and realised that I hadn't done it more times. And even though I knew the front door was locked, I ran back my wife is shouting at me. She's like, "We're going to be. You're going to be late for work. You're going to be late for work." I had to run back to my hall door to do it another seven times to make sure that I checked the handle twelve times. So, what's that all about? And I'm asking you to explain this to I me. I can't. People would, as somebody who doesn't understand, uh, might ridicule. Uh, I would be in that exact category that you're talking about. You live with this. Yep. What is that all about? Bang the handle twice. You know it's locked. Why the need to do it any more than that? I don't have all the answers. Uh, someone else might be able to articulate it better than, than I can. But there's a thing in your head that even though you know the door is locked, you have to check it and you have to check it 12 times. I have to check it 12 times. There's lots of examples. I could be here all day giving you dif- different examples. Um, I mean, down to the... Okay, so say, say for your wife, you said your wife doesn't understand it. That has to be extremely frustrating she to live the, with. She, she lost... She's, she loses the rag with me regularly. Um... And she she gets frustrated sometimes. The the bathroom light is another thing I have to keep switching on and off before we, before we leave every day. I switch it off. I think I switch it off five times. I switch the bathroom light, and she's saying to me, "You know why? I don't know because that's what OCD is." Have you ever got it dealt with? Have you ever gotten for treatment for it? No, and the reason I haven't, uh, and this is again why I want to do this up. The reason I haven't got treatment for it is because of society. Because of you listening, because you don't take it seriously. No, but, uh, no doc- people, uh, people, sorry, hang on for a second. A doctor will, a, a psychiatrist or a psychologist will, 
So why haven't you, don't say because of society, why haven't you gone and dealt with it? If it's causing even problems for you at home, which it clearly is, that has to really piss your wife off. It does, it pisses her off from, but she's coming around, I mean, she. I tried to explain it to her. She says, you know, that I could, I could when we play the conversation from this morning, you know the front door is locked, why did you have to check it 12 times? Mm. I don't have an answer. I don't so have go an and get an answer. Go and get treatment for it. I'm, and it's the same if I'm in my mother's house. We have an, uh, we have, uh, an electric cooker in our house. But when, when I'm in my mother's house, she has one of the uh, the cookers with the knobs on the front of them. You know, the gas cooker with the knob. And again, when I'm in her kitchen, I have to keep checking the knobs to make sure they're off. And even though I know the the the, uh, the knob for the, the, the main oven is off, I have to keep on checking it to make sure it's off. You've no, you've no control over it. And the ignorance, the ignorance that you're displaying here. No, 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 it's not ignorance. I'm saying if you have a problem and this problem is impacting on your life, like say, for example, if somebody drinks too much and that drinking is having an impact on their life, that's when you know it's time to get it dealt okay, with. You, you asked why I didn't get it dealt with and what I don't like or why I don't often talk about it. Read the top text there. That'll tell you why I don't talk about it. Okay, let me have a look. Uh, the top text, Jeremy is full of it and doesn't sound at all genuine. There you go. That's why I don't talk about it. To that person who would think that I would mel- make up a mental illness on the radio Sorry, and, doesn't be- and doesn't believe me. It's like, no, if you're I- putting it in the category of a mental illness, but it is. why are you not getting your mental illness treated? Shame on you. Now, Libby, you have a slight touch of OCD. It's very, very small. It's that I cannot leave my house without my keys. Without your keys? Yeah, keys, like car keys, house keys. But that's a like, sensible thing to do, is it not? Well, I, they're on two separate, they're on two separate key rings. And um, I get very uneasy if I'm leaving, if I don't even, if I, my husband is driving and I don't need the car keys, I have to have them. Oh, you still bring them anyway? I, yeah, I have to bring yeah, I have to have them. And I get kind of bit, like I check with him, do you have my house car keys? Have you seen them? And he's like, come on, if we have to go. And I'm like, I'm not going to the car keys. I don't know what it is. Right, okay. So that's very, well, now I, like I have a little thing that uh, if I'm ironing shirts, I have to hang them on the hanger the same way. Guys, with the greatest respect to you, I'm like that as well, but that is not OCD. No, um, it's not, but it, 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 but it kind of, it is, it is and it isn't. It isn't OCD in that it's nothing like kind of checking, going back over the house and checking and checking and checking. But I can't leave the house without them. So it, 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 in a way, it's kind of along the same sort of wavelength. Yeah, but 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 OCD from what from what I understand and from what, what my conditioning is is that even though you know something is done, you have to repeatedly do it a certain amount of times. I mean, some people say, "Oh, I have to have the remote. I have to have the volume on my remote control uh, at an even number." That's not that's not OCD. That's just a no. Quirk. That's not. That's but I mean, quirk. no. But no. But I mean, in that, I mean, I can't. I mean, I I can't. I mean, to the point. That, I mean, I can't. Don't have the reasoning to say, right? I don't need them. I'll just go. I have to find them. Like that's not the same as kind of having a remote control as ever. If you, you know, having the remote, control. it's a little, it's a little bit different. Okay, yeah, stay, it's not stay, as stay there as for yours. one second because I don't have too much time on this. Anthony, you're on ninety eight FM. Hi, Anthony. Hi, right, how are you? Good, thank you, Anthony. What did you want to say? Well, a mate of mine has some mild OCD along with autism. For example, when he watches a TV show, he has to watch it from the very start because of it. I mean, is that not a sensible thing to do to watch a television show from the start? No, it's also because, no, even if you're watching a new season of it, as I said, we have to go back from the very beginning. Oh, right. So he yeah. might have already watched season one and two, and before yeah. he watches season three, he has to watch season one and two again. Yeah. Oh. And due, I, I, and due to his autism, he can't have a breakdown, so he actually had to leave secondary school because of it before he did his leaving. Well, I was, I was, I'm the same with the the front door of my house. I can literally not, I cannot get into the car um, without without constantly checking the. Um, I'll, I'll have to get my wife on the show someday to talk about it because it can become quite farcical that I'm running back up my my avenue uh, to check the door and she's screaming at me. You know the door is locked. I was standing there. You check the door and I'm going up and banging down the handle of the door again to check that it's it's locked. It's a very hard thing to for people to to understand. But again, I'm going to ask you the question. If this is so debilitating in your life, if it affects... It's not, debil- it's not debilitating. It is, but it's debilitating for your wife if she's to put up with that the whole time. Why is there so many people with depression that have never got professional help for it? A lot of people do, though. A lot of people don't. Would you say that to someone who had depression? Yeah, go and get it treated. Yes, mm, I would. Of course I would. And I have done. And I have said it to friends and family of mine. And have they got it? Yes. <laughs> Helen, you're on 98 FM. Hi, Helen. How are you? <laughs> not too bad. It was just funny just when um, Katie put me through the word debilitating came up because that was what I said in my message. It's 
unreal. I've had it since I was a kid and people can kind of laugh it off and think, oh yeah, it's just a little quirk or yeah. I- idiosyncrasy. It's really not. Like, Okay, so I, how, do, how does it impact on your life? Basically, uh, or well, one thing with me is obsessive um, hand washing. Like, I'm not the cleanest person. My house is a mess, but I wash my hands to death. And I literally must go through a bottle of hand sanitizer a day. So that's one element. The other is a counting thing with me. Mm-hmm. Um, that, say, for example, even with, if I'm drying my hair, I think that I can't just, um, if it's dry after 98 um like brushes that my nana will die because she's 98 oh that's, so uh, that's very further. severe yeah now um, I, I, again I'm going to ask you the same question Helen um, and, and I'm not talking out of school I have spoken to family members and friends who've dealt with uh, mental health issues and encourage them to seek professional help because that's what I think you should do and oh. in most cases they have have you sought professional help to deal with that because that's very debilitating Oh, it really is. Yeah, I've been, uh, to be honest, like, I've been an inpatient in um, a psychiatric hospital in Dublin for, uh, like, altogether through the admissions, probably the best part of a year. Um, and that all, was just all, a all, all related, point. All related to your severe OCD? Uh, no, it was a diff- different issue, unfortunately, oh, but right. I would have brought that up. And even the psychiatrists that I deal with, and even psychologists or CBT therapists, they kind of just took it as a like, just oh, that's just it, you know. I suppose in the grand scheme of things, they're like, well, that's really not what you're, you know. Yeah, your in, other, in other words, you're more important or more serious yeah, issues to deal with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yourself. But I think I really, when I look back in hindsight, I think a lot of my issues stemmed from that as a child, because like it could completely child, take over, can't it, Helen? It completely oh, rules your life in a, in a lot of things. Me. Oh, when I was a kid, it was the light switch thing that you mentioned as well. Like, I, and I mean, someone's just after texting. Sorry if you're going to cross you. This shows how the, the ignorance of OCD. Somebody just texted <laughs> in about my lock in my front door and said, can you not just get your oh. wife to lock the front door for you? That person clearly doesn't understand what OCD yeah. is. Even if somebody else locks the door, you still have to check it X amount of times. That's what OCD yeah. is. It's compulsion. Yeah. And and do you get the, because it's the counting thing, the numbers, but I, I associate it then with bad things are going to happen to some like if I have a bad thought, I have to oh it sounds so ridiculous, but I have to like open and shut my eyes four times and tap my head four times. Right? I sound like a maniac. But I did actually manage to hold down like a normal job and nor- people wouldn't know. But I had all those kind of things. Uh, but um, to be honest with you, you're, you're very brave coming on the radio and it's nothing to be ashamed of. Um, but but the, what what this topic has proven is proven the ignorance. I'm not even going to read uh, the text message. Well, I'll, I'll read one. And give these trolls. Why would you will give you, the trolls oxygen? Will you ask Jeremy if I have OCD? Every time I have a pint, I have to have 10 more. Yeah, see, there you go. Would you say that to someone who is suicidal or with deep depression or bipolar? Some people do, sadly. Rachel, you're on 98FM. Hi, Rachel. Hi, you guys. Hi, Rachel. Um, how are you? Yeah, I think uh, what Jeremy was saying, is, it is really correct. Like, the stigma with OCD is a little bit... It's, you don't kind of take the piss out of other mental illnesses. No, you OCD. don't. It's like, ah, I'm a, little bit, I'm a little bit OCD. You're not a little bit OCD. You either suffer with OCD or you don't. OCD is a very complex condition. I've suffered with it for a long time. Um, and, and sorry, when you say you suffered with it, uh, am I... I suffered really bad, but at the moment, I'm, it's, I'm, it's workable. My life is workable. So it's in remission. It's, okay, wait, wait, wait for Adrian to shame you into going for help first. No, no, no. No, I was going to ask, did you? Yeah, well, I got to the point I had to because um, I couldn't, I couldn't leave, I couldn't leave my house with the fear that if somebody was to breed on me or touch me, that I'd contract HIV. Even though I know okay, that's so not it, logically it got possible. so. And this is the point I'm trying to make, Jeremy, that uh, if it is uh, uh, as severe as Rachel probably had it, then you do need to seek help. Well, mine's, because mine's not as severe as Rachel's, thank God. Well, I don't, th- I don't think it yeah, is. it's it, like I mean, it stems from little things. So then. The, the need to the need to clean or wash your hands comes from the intrusive thought. Because you can't diffuse yourself from that intrusive thought, um, you have to do a compulsion, like like that girl was saying, to keep herself safe for her nan's sake. Like so, you you beget, you then feed you actually feed the condition by doing the the compulsion. So do, do you, have, do, you do you have the remote control compulsion as well? All my remote controls have to be placed in a line uh, correctly together, all at the same distance. Mm. Um, and that's that's not a quirk. That is actually I can't sit in the living room 
if the remote controls aren't all aligned in the same in the same line together. Okay, this is something we might have to come back to because uh, there's huge interest in it and unfortunately we are out of time but we might come back to it uh, later on in the week because a lot of you have been in touch with us. The Voice of the City 98 FM's Dublin Talks with Adrian Kennedy. We're live every morning from 10 on 98 FM.